So this is an oak crotch piece that I um, cut off of a uh, neighbor's tree had taken down um, a few months ago. And it started to develop um, some pretty good cracks. Three of them in here. I wish I would have videoed um, the before, but I wasn't quite sure how this mes method was going to work out. So I um, figured it'd be just a, a side project for my information. But a friend of mine, thank you, Lynn Edwards, for um, sharing a trick with me. He soaks um, paper towels in watered down wood glue. Um, he said that he uses uh, regular white glue. Um, I had some Type Bond on hand, Type Bond 1, I think it is, just the original. <laughs> so I soaked the paper towel. He um, puts it along the crack, spreads it all in there, dumps it good, gets it all good and saturated, and then wraps it in, um, he puts his in a plastic bag. I didn't have a plastic bag on hand, but I did have some clean wrap, wrap in the shop. So um, I wrapped it really good with clean wrap so that way it would slowly dry instead of drying pretty quickly. Um, I think the point of it is is to allow time for the glue and water to um, seep in, obviously. Um, I didn't let it dry dry completely. I think Lynn does. Um, but what that's supposed to do is it helps to draw the wood grain back together again and, and draw the cracks together. Now these look like they're still pretty good size but they were a lot bigger and I wish I could have videoed it. Unfortunately you just have to take my word for it. Um, these were a lot bigger cracks going through here and hopefully you can see it. There is a pith here because this is a crotch and a pith here and then here is um, you know obviously where the two trees screw together so there's another pretty good crack here. So they have shrunk up quite a bit and this was just, let's see, three or four days maybe um, that I did this. And so I'm going to draw a circle on it and with my chainsaw because I don't have a bandsaw big enough to uh, cut out blanks. With the chainsaw I'm going to try to get as close as I can to round. Um, we're going to put on the lathe and turn it and see what this has to offer. It's not that that thick. It's probably like three and a half, maybe four inches thick. So I'll probably try to do a platter since this is a pretty good size and I think a platter will also help display some of the feathering that might be going on in here. It's always exciting to see what's going on in crotch pieces. I enjoy turning them because of the feathering and it's always a surprise. Um, so anyways, that's a trick. It's Thank you again, Lynn Edwards, for um, sharing that with me. It, if I, I'm sure if I would have waited a little longer, these cracks would have probably closed up a lot more, but typical me, I'm impatient, so I decided just to do it for a few days, but I'm very pleasantly surprised. This one in the center here was much, I mean, I could probably stick, I don't know, a, a nickel, a nickel's thickness in there when this first started, probably with all of these, and that's closed it up considerably. Probably would be best to just let it dry, I'm assuming. I don't know. Like I said, this is my first go at this particular method. So um, maybe try it several different ways, putting it on there, letting it completely dry um, and waiting. Uh, it's a little wet where the paper towel was. It's still slight sticky, but I did saturate this really good. I mean, it was good and, and soaked with uh, glue watered down. So We'll see. Um, I may learn that it does need to set a little longer, but I'm going to put a face plate on because um, a wormwood screw would probably hit right in the center here, and I don't want to separate, uh, cause this to separate any more than what it is, so I'll probably use my uh, Laguna face plate for it and get that going. So I'm going to cut it down, and then when I load it on the lathe, I'll see what I can do. See you then. So I got my face plate on. I'm gonna load it up and see what happens.
if you don't put the top on your OB Shine juice, you will be sure to drop it in the floor, like I just did. Well. Well, I didn't spill all of it. Goodness. Anyways, I guess every video has to have a blooper. So, this is my bow. I was going to do a platter. I didn't think I was going to have enough that didn't have some cracks in it to do it. But, I was able to make a pretty good sized bowl. As you can tell, it's wobbling, of course. When I turn it on the face plate, it turns just fine and smooth, and then I turn it around, and then whatever. So, but I turned it regardless. It has some beautiful grain. This is a crotch piece. My husband says it looks like fire. I might like to agree with him. You can see some of the hard spots where it didn't absorb any of the finish whatsoever. I'm thinking what that, that is. This isn't the first time I've had finish do this to me. Um, where in some areas it just looks matte finished. You can see it. It almost looks blue. So if you guys know why that happens... I mean, I'm assuming it is either hard spots in the wood that didn't absorb. Um, it could be because of the paste wax, the abrasive paste wax causing um, the finish not to absorb. That could possibly be it too. Um, I did sand some areas up to 800 grit because I had to go back. My camera just quit shutting off on me for whatever reason. I had to go back and get some of these more warm holes that dust that they create when they chew up I call it worm poop because well they eat the wood and where is it gonna go so anyways um, has a lot of pits and I chose to leave them instead of filling them um, I thought that that would be I don't know interesting I guess because there's some that the holes go all the way through that one there. It goes all the way through. Oop. Sorry. You guys are going for a ride. I'll get it off the lathe and then probably take some still photos of it. I haven't done a mortise in a while and I was kind of afraid to do it on this one because of all the cracks. Um, but I wanted to being that I'm having the wobble when I turn things around, I wanted to just to be able to finish the outside and be done with it. Um, this wood wasn't completely, completely dry, but it was it was dry enough, obviously, that I can get a finish on it. Um, more in the bottom center area here had some wetter wood, but it was, and then you got, it's like you went through a layer of wet wood and then you went back to this punky, chippy stuff. Um, I'm glad because I had to cut away quite a bit of punk um, and shorten the height of it, which I knew I was going to have to, but I really didn't expect to get it this deep. So, this is about the perfect size salad bowl. I um, started turning because I was like, I want to make my own salad bowls. I'm tired of these shallow um, bowls to eat salad out of, and sometimes we have a salad for you know, dinner like a chicken salad and we just load it up full of goodies and this is a perfect size bowl for that because you can have all your lettuce and then you have your your layers evenly all over instead of them, you know, floating down to the bottom. Well, not floating, but sinking, I should say. So hopefully I can get a hold of some dried wood about this size. I wouldn't obviously eat salad. This one, there's holes in it. It's got um, uh, spalting, so... Uh, I wouldn't need any food out of it. It'd be a very good um, bowl, I guess, to put bananas or apples or something in, maybe. I think it's beautiful. Hopefully it doesn't crack or move anymore. Um, it moved a little bit, obviously, the rim and stuff like that, but um, nothing protruding out on the outside. 
that made me think that it was crazy moving. Anyways, enough talking. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Y'all have a wonderful weekend and God bless.